in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Top Ten Show. I am John Roca. Uh, I am Matt Nost. How are we out there? We forgot to say it last week. I hope you, if you, the, those stateside, had a great Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, we're getting ready to take ours. We, we should, are. Should have said something last week. But oh, well. We hope you enjoyed uh, Thanksgiving, and Christmas is officially here. Yes. That's one of the perils of recording ahead of time. We're not always on time with our holiday wishes, but we are thinking about it in our hearts. How about that? Of course. Is that fair? At all times. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> yeah, of course. The sincerity in your eyes. Thank you. You know, only I could see that, but trust me, people out there watching, it was genuine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then Christmas officially starts at that point. Yeah. Which I asked... Catherine, because she gets in a habit of listening to the Christmas station whenever she's yeah. in the car. Yeah. And are you just going to start December 1st? It's just, it's an automatic or is it post Thanksgiving? Wow. I don't know. Sometimes, like, she's caught herself maybe kind of jonesing for it already, but I don't know how much she'll listen throughout the, wow. the month. I, I already started three weeks ago. Really? Yeah, I don't care about Thanksgiving. Like, I don't care about Thanksgiving. I've, as I've gotten older, I don't care about the holiday. It's fun to hang out, eat. Oh, no. Oh, is this on american Oh, okay, okay. No, no, I'm just, just taking it off. <laughs> I thought we were going to go. Let's do this thing. No, I just, to me, it's like, it's just the, the Thanksgiving for me is like, it's fun to hang out and watch football and eat and do whatever. But Christmas is like a full-on celebration. And it's a month-long celebration. And so, yeah, but you turn it into longer. a seven-week celebration. Yeah, true. That's why I don't start sooner. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. It looks great. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I yeah. hold off because Christmas is the one where everybody agrees. We're going balls to the yeah, wall. Yeah, like exactly. Everybody is on board. Yeah. Bring I, out the lights. I drove past the Scientology Center on Sunset. It's right across from uh, okay. Kaiser. You yeah. know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, totally. And then you round the corner, go past the Vista, and they have their media center. There's a, They've got a channel on DirecTV or something. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Don't believe what you heard. Believe what you can see. Exactly. Tune into Channel Bubble. I've seen the the fucking billboard a lot of times, but they put out their Christmas lights. You oh, know, they're already. co-opting onto wow the season. So yeah. yeah, they've got them strung up. We're just like you. That's what they're trying exactly. to say. We're, we're not so different. We're not so different. We're just Scientologists. Yes, we just believe in Zenu. We just we believe in the mid or whatever it is that they that they've got there. And you're a suppressive person, all that kind of stuff. I have no idea. That's one of my favorite guilty pleasure reality shows is her uh, – Leah Remini's show, The Scientology Show. You watch the whole thing? Oh, I do. I, the first season was too much about her. The second season, they finally started focusing on the, other, on the people that she's actually interviewing. Yeah. Because like in the first season, it's always to come back to her and she's like – which is like, or they go to her little vignette. And she's like, "This is why I got out of being in Scientology. All of this, and blah blah blah." And you're just like, "Okay." But then the second season, they really focused on the stories, and I think the third season has done the same thing as well. So I've enjoyed that because okay. I think it's fascinating to be part of such a widespread organization that is like outside of the organization for the most part. It's pretty reviled by people who uh, know anything about it or watch those uh, documentaries. Yeah, but persecution can only make someone more fervent. That's what I mean. So it, it works out for them. On some level, it still works for them. Yeah. yeah. At some point, they need, do you think they need it? Like they like like they, they court the persecution because it makes it seem as if it's like something dangerous or rebellious or makes them seem more martyr martyr like no i just think those are the types of people that gravitate towards this sort of this ah, sort of solution interesting you appeal to them on a certain level and whatnot yeah. and now they just turn that energy that way hmm, fascinating okay yeah. I, I look at it as an observational thing. If you want to be part of it, that's your decision. It's yeah. your life. Yeah. But Do not I, care. It's interesting to watch from the outside well, the, how they handle things. From what I know of the yeah. basis of the religion, like, wow, this is a weird one. Like, mm-hmm. of all the religions that have been created, this one's real interesting, guys. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, kind of outdid yourself here, science fiction writer. <laughs> so, science fiction writer. <laughs> I mean, that's what he was. He wrote science fiction yeah. and then created his own religion he out did. of whole cloth. He did. Uh, once again, I'll plug 
If it's still up on on uh, on iTunes, that episode, uh, two part episode that uh, Paul F. Tompkins did interviewing yeah, uh, L. Ron the Dead Hubbard. Authors. Yeah, the Dead Authors podcast, one of my favorite podcasts. If you have not listened to, uh, I forget the actor's name. He's doing all those. Com- do it's those- Andy Daly. Andy Daly. Yeah, he does uh, the L. Ron Hubbard one. Oh, I wish I'd been in the audience for both of those episodes because it is the my, it's my favorite. It's my it's favorite. a great show. I, right? recommend, I recommended it to my dad the other day. Yeah, yeah. Like but, you, I, you might like this. You can go back. Like intermittently, so working on the house as much as I have, yeah. I spend hours alone. So I've I listened to that full series. Right, I've right. heard every one now. The Confucius one was hilarious. Confucius was great. W- which one did you like? Which one stands out for you? There's a ton. Okay, there's a ton. Okay, the uh, uh, what's his name that did James Bond? Ian. Oh, the Ian, Ian Fleming Gordon? one. The Ian Fleming. <laughs> That's a good one. Oscar Wilde's pretty good. Oscar Wilde's fantastic. Uh, yeah. What other ones? Walt Whitman. Okay. That one was pretty good. Did you like the Virginia Woolf one with Mary Holland? Sure. Yeah. I love Mary Holland, by the way. I think she's uh, funny as hell. Let's see. What were some other ones? What were some other ones? Was there a Mark Twain one? Oh, the William S. Burroughs one is good. Oh, yeah. It's an unsettling one. Uh, yeah, it's still up. It's still up. You've got to go you enjoy it. Dead Office Spot. It's good. Yeah. If you like history, you, you've read a bunch of books. Yes. You, <laughs> and then it's just this guy's interpretation or this gal's interpretation of whatever this is. That's why I loved when you brought it up on oh, – we started getting into our side conversation yeah. on Collider Live about the deep faking oh, of – Oh, yeah. And I was like, all oh, historical figures, that's a great show because that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. It's just a, you know, it's someone <laughs> doing an impression. So you can do whatever you want with it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, oh, the Tennessee Williams one was good. That's a good one. The Kristen, Kristen Shaw. Shaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this has got a bunch. I listened to a whole t- – I've listened to a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is crazy. You definitely, if you haven't listened to it, and I know we're plugging another podcast that's already over. That isn't even an ex- like it, yeah, they're not making new episodes. It, it, it's it still went worth to it. A, a charity, so maybe people yes. still donate to the charity. True. Good point. Good point. They can they can get it. You know, otherwise. I haven't listened to the Doctor Seuss one. Oh, I should listen to the Doctor Seuss one. Uh, Shit, that one's good. That one's good. Oh my god. There's one guy. I can't remember the actual author's name, but he wrote. The man with a thousand faces, or whatever. That Lucas. Oh, okay. Eventually said that you know that's what I made off oh, of Star Joseph Wars. Oh, Joseph Campbell. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that one's pretty good because he does. <laughs> he goes off on Lucas, I uh, think. He goes, well, yeah. what is that old character actor's name? The Yev. Uh, <laughs> from Disney era, like 50s kind of voice. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to see the dopey, mean. the oh. what's going on here? <laughs> it's kind of spoke like that. Every once in a while, we get into a rhythm. It's that. Yeah. And like, oh, what a great. This is who you came up with. Yeah. Maybe there's his video or uh, yeah, video of him being interviewed. So it doesn't sound like that. But if it was a choice, <sighs> like uh, what a great choice. I wish they, they, these were on video. Because I mean, just the L. Ron Hubbard one on video alone would yeah. I would have made it's maybe a good show. sixty bucks for that one. It's a good it's so show. Funny. They outdid themselves with that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you're tuning in not to hear us talk about other podcasts. We yeah. talk about this one. That's the top ten. Uh, and uh, today we are counting down the top ten famous actors. With famous parents, right? Well, with actor parents. With actor parents. With actor parents. So top ten famous actors. Yeah. With actors. This is honor of, uh, honor of Patrick Schwarzenegger, who has a uh, new movie coming out. Do you remember the name of it? Daniel isn't here. Daniel isn't real. Yeah, Daniel isn't real. There you go. I'm actually interviewing him for the deep cut on Mondays. We're recording this. Yeah. So this will be an interesting conversation. I'm watching it over the weekend. So the fact that we're doing like a double bill with Patrick is kind of funny on, on so many levels. But dude, this is maybe one of the most difficult lists I've ever had. Had to compile because there are it's so tough. many actors from famous actors or famous actors from actors uh, to throw in. Yeah, here. eventually maybe Schwarzenegger gets there and he would make this list. Yeah, if he does, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we Still have no idea. His career. Yeah, um, but it was super interesting to go back and be like, oh, I never knew. Yeah, that one, and over and over and over again. And there could be some that I missed, but I mm-hmm. went through a laundry list of as many possible. I spent longer on this than I've spent in a while just because you yeah. – I got fascinated sometimes and be like, oh, my God, he had a kid? Right. Oh, I didn't even realize it. Oh, that's like uh, McQueen, Chad McQueen. Yeah, Chad McQueen is the guy from Karate Kid. Exactly. Yeah. And then went off and I think eventually got into like owns a racing something or other. And apparently he won't come back. They've tried to get him to come back for Cobra Kai. He won't come back. He, he, they've tried. They reached out to him. They had conversations with him, but he just won't come back. It's so interesting because they just announced Elizabeth Shue is going to co- appear in season three. So that's going to be fun. I didn't watch season two. What's wrong with you, man? Why, why do you hate things that are good? I don't understand. The Billy Zabka side of season one was just perfect, and yeah. the Daniel LaRusso drove me nuts every oh, time. Oh, you didn't like that he was a jerk, or you just didn't every believe him? Every time. Oh, okay, okay. So I just right. couldn't get into it. Okay. Well, I. I 
do you really want to? So <laughs> I think I said this to you once before, but what killed me most yeah. going into trying to believe this reality, because Zabka's, I, I could plausibly see that makes sense. Sure, sure. But LaRusso, to end up with a car dealership empire in Los Angeles, because he became so known from this karate tournament that he's still handing out bonsai trees, and it's part of his fucking marketing campaign that somehow worked in LA and that shit is so horse shit it's not even f- no one gives a shit about local celebrities like that in Los Angeles because <laughs> what do you mean you can hang out for long like he's in the valley it's not like they said he's deep valley up in the hills or right, something right 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 it sounds like he's maybe Encino but what uh, about the dude with the mattresses those two guys they did it for 20 years leads and whatever you know the yeah. I can't be beat yeah. and you're killing me Larry yeah, you're killing me Larry uh, those guys made a living out of this thing if, he's, if he got a funny local commercial maybe does, does that character look like he's funny yeah no, that's a fair point <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear your criticism and I absolutely think it's a valid criticism I mean he became so famous <laughs> in Los Angeles when if you want to you can go and sit on one of five specific streets and yeah. sit there long enough and you will see somebody just guaranteed yeah so long as you know specifically where to go, and I'm not going to say where that is, oh. you can uh, move here and figure it out on your own. Yes, you can. It's not too difficult if you think about it, but it's totally – you see all kinds of people in all kinds of different places. Yeah, yeah. And to tell me that Daniel LaRusso became <laughs> bigger noise locally than that, fuck off. Fuck off. It did not happen. <laughs> yeah. If they said he was in Riverside, yeah, sure. Okay. Sure. All right. I believe that. You buy that. Sherman Oaks? No. Not so much. No. <laughs> I love how there's a delineation. <laughs> well, just there within. The, Where, what about uh, Encino? Would that be possible well, in Encino? I, they're, they're saying Encino. I think right, that's right. What they're saying you're in right, this. Yeah. Encino-ish. I'm like, I'm still not buying it. You really? It's not Still okay. not buying right, it. Fair Thousand right. Oaks? Sure. Okay. I can accept Thousand Pushing Oaks. Pushing out. Yeah, I've been Further. there. I can accept Malibu? Oaks. They would have uh, car dealerships. So yeah, true. You're true. not going to get it. You'd have to be selling something else. You'd have mm-hmm. to be a real estate guy in Malibu, I think. And then Zabka would come back on and be like, oh, this is a great show. This is a great <laughs> show. <laughs> and then here comes the bullshit of LaRusso. I'm like, I don't understand this character at all. <laughs> that was season one to me. Uh, fair enough. I, I did like the first season better than the second season, so I will agree with that. But I look forward to seeing Elizabeth Shue. But yeah, Chad McQueen, we were saying, yeah, there's a number of his. And like sometimes it's multi-generational. Mm-hmm. Like three or four generations, obviously in Drew Barrymore's case, not saying that she's on my list or your list, but like she is, she's like, there's a number of Barrymore's the, between before you get to Drew. Yeah. She's got the, the chops family yeah. wise. Yeah, certainly. Certainly. And one of the reasons, and then another uh, thing is that we choose one movie from each of these actors that is like their, their best performance. Do we, we did that, right? You did that too? Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's, or favorite movie of theirs. Or favorite movie of theirs, yes. Yeah. And that's all connected into what we're uh, – And yeah. that influenced on some level my final outcome. That's what I mean. That's why this is the most difficult list. Yeah. Because you're like, you could say this, but then how much do I think their performance in this movie or this movie itself or moves them up or lower? How much do I appreciate this or is it you have – Several. Yeah. I still have one on my list where I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to choose. I've got it as, you know, yeah. this slash that on my list, and I'll make the decision when we get to it. I like that. Uh, but certain people are just like, well, mm-hmm. perhaps maybe this one isn't as good ostensibly as whatever these other choices is. Yeah. But he's got five all at this level, and I want to choose them all. Are you like this way with parties? Like do you go like, okay, there's there's two people I, w- I – like I don't know who I'm going to invite the morning of. I'm going to let them know. What kind of party is that? So there's two people and now I'm only inviting well, I'm just saying, one? Like, like you're saying, you're going to get – when you get to it, then you'll decide which one you're going to put on your list. Are you that way too with part like, – no. like the morning come of on, you, you're on. like, I don't know. I don't know. Or at wedding, you're like, uh, we'll see how I feel uh, on the morning of the wedding who I want to invite to be between these two guys or people to get into the wedding. Well, hey, I, who are you inviting last minute to a wedding? I'm Day just of. saying. I'm just saying. Just send them a text. Dude, you're in. You've known about this list for a week and you're still debating until we start to record. A week is strong. OK. We texted about this on Sunday night. It's still enough. So it's a couple <laughs> Days later, it's the middle of the holidays. You got Thanksgiving bullshit. I, I showed up early to, you to facilitate. Thank you, know, you. Not a problem. Not a problem. Happy to do it. <laughs> but oh, you had a week to do this and be like, really? I had last night to do this. Fair enough. Fair so enough. that's right. why I texted you, like, just to make sure because I'm sitting down and I'm already an hour into this. Yeah. Is this is what we're going for, right? Because now <laughs> I'm into the weeds on all these choices. I can't get out of this place. Uh, all right. Well, let's get into it. Matt, do you want to talk about the show works? 
Uh, once we set a topic, we go our individual ways and create personal top ten. Let's show back up here. I do my bottom three. He does his bottom three. I do my next two. He does his next two. Then we trade one apiece. Once we have revealed our personal top ten, let's we create the shows between the two of us. Boom. And, and I want to thank everybody who's been watching us on video. A lot of great yeah. comments. Uh, we busted out of the gate with almost 5,000 views on our first video, so thank you so much. If you're just seeing us for the first time, go back and watch the other episodes that are on camera as well. And please leave a comment. And please leave a comment. Yeah, I love reading all those. Uh, I got to do a better job responding, but I love reading them. So, um, all right, let's start. Uh, what do you got? Number 10. Uh, so a billion choices. Sure. Sure. Of course there are a billion choices. I got like 30 people on the fucking honorable mention. Me too. Um, so I just went, you know, I'm, at that point you start looking at the overall scope and you're like, all yeah. right, so I want to try and grab all the randoms too. like try and right, be more right. representative of the list as a whole overall. Yeah, sure. So 10, I put Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, daughter of Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. Yeah, yeah. All right. For Halloween. I really had a hard time cutting her. Okay. I, I was just – She's want, got a lot of work. She does. I like. And I wanted to put her on the list and I was fighting to put her on the list. Uh, but in the end, I couldn't do it. And I'm a little I, – I, I'm, I'm OK with my list. I'm happy with my list and the reasons for why I did it. But I still don't like that I couldn't put Jamie Lee Curtis on this list. Go ahead. Uh, well, it's a, it's a lot of people's. Yeah. IMDb's that you're up against yes. and the body of work. Some people, it's it's. I like you in a lot of stuff, but this one movie I think is fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Do I reward you for that one, or do I try and go with someone like a Jamie Lee, where right. I like this movie, I like that movie. You were great in this. Yeah, you know, just saw you in Knives Out, and you're still putting out good work. Yes, she is. Uh, Certainly good in that Halloween movie. Yeah. Yeah. So track record. Then I was like, all right, I'm going to honor her for that. Halloween is great. I don't think they should. That's one they don't need to remake. The first one still works. Yes, it does. The terror of it is 100 percent palpable mm-hmm. at all times. Mm-hmm. Something we both said and everybody else has said. And it's been said to death <laughs> at this point. But if you're new to movies, if yeah. you've never seen Halloween, you please it, do yourself a favor and go watch it. This is coming from two people that don't like horror. Well, don't tune into horror. Right, we're not the biggest horror fans. Yeah, I don't dislike but it. We but like good horror. We just don't like every horror. Exactly. Right, right, right. The genre as a whole is not one that pulls me in. If I'm going to watch something dumb, I'll watch a dumb action or dumb comedy. True. Dumb action is easy peasy. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Because, you know, you can turn your brain off. So the expectations are only so high. Anyway, Jamie Lee Curtis, my number 10, not on your list. No, not on my list. Okay, moving on then. Okay, what's your number nine? Number nine, surprise it ended up this low, was uh, Michael Douglas. Wow, that's a punt. Okay. Holy shit, that's a punt. Okay, fair enough. When it stacks up. (laughs) I know. I'll happily defend this when we get to it. yeah, you're not wrong. No, no, well, you're not wrong. Well, it's Trust our opinion, me, so it blew one me of away us. when I did it, and I was like, yeah, but if I look at the overall scope, mm. like my next one, all right, all that's right. a punt. Is Matthew Broderick for Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Wow, son even, of James Broderick. Yeah. For, honestly, because that movie I adored as a kid, I okay. still love. I have a soft spot for it, but that was tuning into it. I loved it every time it was on. Yeah, I watched it a million times. Mm-hmm. I've got numerous favorite scenes. I love that movie. I know, to pieces. And mm-hmm. then going back retrospectively and looking at it from the perspective that Ferris is a figment of Cameron's imagination. Yeah. And you Ooh, watch interesting. Like that. Yeah, so... Oh. You that's mean why like he never got out of bed and it was all a dream sequence? Because everything everything goes right. Yeah, for, for Cameron, everything. certainly. And he's always looking at Ferris. It's from somewhat his yeah. perspective. He's an observer in the background. When you start looking through that, you're like, oh, okay. Uh, this hyper, <laughs> like well, this that. hyper realized yeah. altruism of this is what perfect fun could be. We can get away with everything. The sausage yeah. king of fucking Chicago. Right, right. Whatever it was. Uh, you touch me on your rat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's got so. I, oh, it's I the wanted, most quotable 80s I film. wanted Matthew Broderick to succeed so hard I for know. so long after that. Well, that's why I pushed back. You just said it's about their resume, I, but this it doesn't one, stack up this one. True. But this one was such a high water mark for me at a young age of my mm-hmm. life that it's hard for me to deny that. I can respect that. Absolutely. And, uh, for the next, I don't know how many years, I tuned in everything you did because I believed you could get back to that and you just never really did. For to me. him, to, to me, him and Henry Winkler are the two guys that you just, okay. you're like, he was the Fonz. How was he not cooler in all these other films for the rest of his life? Why is he the dweeb in Barry? And then you're like, Matthew Broderick, same thing. He's a dweeb in The Producers. And you're like, wait, this is the coolest kid I knew growing up. But apparently that was not, although Winkler seemed more destined. Broderick yeah. did it once. Right. Winkler's is like, yeah, I did this for years. Right. I know exactly how to portray it. So he, you would assume he just ends up doing that. Yeah. Lorenzo Lamas or something. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> for all you kids out there, Lorenzo Lamas, Greece two, Greece two. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh no, Greece one rather. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Greece one. Yeah, I, yeah, I wouldn't know. Yeah. I've never, I don't remember him in it. <laughs> He's the idiot that she try that she tries to leave. Travolta him. and okay. Conaway. That's and it. Beyond that, I don't know who's in it on the dude side. <laughs> Olivia Newton John. Uh, and sh- then, uh, shout out to my friend Barry Pearl, who's one of the T Birds. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no offense, Bear. <laughs> None whatsoever. I just. It's, uh, I didn't like it on the outside as a kid, like oh, from okay. afar. Uh, and thankfully, it wasn't one my sister watched a lot because right I've on. seen a lot of movies that she loved because that's. You yeah, know, that's how you do. It's a democracy, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it's it is as much house. as you want it to be a dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she felt the same way. It's all right. I got a love for like uh, Adventures in Babysitting now. Oh, it's a good film. It is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shag, she watched a lot. I've oh, my God. The Phoebe Cates one, right? <laughs> I've seen Shag a lot oh, of times. Oh, my God. Yeah. A lot of that times. One. Wolf. <laughs> that was hers. Oof. Thankfully. Yeah, I remember that. How come that one doesn't come up in the goddamn schmodown? Uh, all right. So that's your number eight, Matthew Broderick. Yep. You know what's weird? I now have a fondness for that movie for certain characters in it. Ah, okay. Uh, and what's her name? The actress. I've always liked her ever since. She's mostly From done Shag? TV. Yeah. Okay. She went off. Uh, she's the most. Let's take a look here. Because I know Phoebe arguably, Cates is in it. Yes. It's not Aniston, obviously. No, no, no. It's the dark. Bridget Fonda? No. Okay. Uh, Annabeth oh Annabeth Gish yes yeah yes didn't she do SLC Punk yes 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 yeah, yeah. and she was in um, Brotherhood and she's been in a bunch of stuff bunch of TV <sighs> she pops up in movies every once in a while what did she play was it on West Wing where she played a Secret Service agent yeah right uh, wait are you sure wait on West Wing oh, was she, wasn't not. she a Secret Service agent on something I thought that was what's her face from Weeds Mary Louise Parker or is that not her Maybe you're right. Maybe she was on uh, West Wing. I don't know. She was a – anyway, she, she doesn't really matter. We're not here she to talk about She works a lot. Her. She does. Yeah. She's, yeah, she was on West Wing. You're right. Elizabeth Bartlett Winston. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. OK. All right, man. Nost. But because of it, uh, to this day, I still believe Matthew Broder could pop off and be something I love again. <laughs> That's really difficult. After all, Fair I enough. still have belief okay. down there, and it won't die. I respect your belief, man. I like that you're committed to things you're committed to. So okay. that one was so strong. Anyway, what do you got? All right. My number 10 is Jennifer Jason Lee. Okay. Yeah. It was a tough cut. Yeah, I know. For me, because, like, same thing. She's been a part of my life since the 80s with Fast Time to Ridgemont High. Okay. And I followed her Hot Sucker Proxy. I think she's funny as hell in Hot, Su- Hot Sucker Proxy. Mm, you are alone in this room. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Uh, I liked her because she's doing the, the the 40s mall thing. She's doing the 40s uh, mall. I, it feels like they're making Dame, the Dame. two, three different movies simultaneously. That's fair. The movie itself doesn't 100% work. I don't disagree with you with that. Well, but, but I think most- she's doing a good interpretation of what she wants to do, what she's supposed to do. But she's the only one doing it, really. So then is she? I don't know. Kate McKinnon, people loved what she was doing in Ghostbusters. I thought she was terrible in that movie. People loved her in that movie. She seems like in a whole other movie than everybody else. Yeah, but I still believe she could be good in something else. She's great in uh, Bombshell. Uh, I need to see that. Yeah. It's not out yet, I don't think, but she's – I'm going to look it up real quick. She's fantastic in Bombshell. Oh, look at you, you fucking snooty hipster son of a bitch. What do you mean? Oh, you know what she's great in? Oh, that thing you haven't seen. No, I wasn't. Wow, (laughs) that is your interpretation. (laughs) That's exactly what you said. I did not say it that way You said, oh, she's great in that, you know, and that's not out yet. Well, because I don't want you to – I don't want people to feel like you've been waiting to see it and you haven't gotten around to it. I was trying to help you. But uh, fuck me, I guess. Uh, She's in The uh, Hitcher. Okay. Well, I appreciate that then because I thought you were saying fuck you. No. She's in The Hitcher. I remember her in Backdraft. Rush. She's fantastic in Rush. Single white female. Yeah, but I don't know if I go back for Rush. I don't know if I go yeah. back for single white female. Okay. Like she's, uh, okay. Hateful. She's great in that. Oh, yeah. That's that's the one I put down, the Hateful Eight. That's my film because that's her coming back for people to reappreciate the ferocity of her as an actress. What was it? Good Night? The uh, uh, Pattinson? The A24 oh, Pattinson? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she's, she's in, in that, that as well. She, yeah, yep, that yep. was an interesting character in that. I remember Existence. Remember that one? Do you remember that one at all? Existence? Yeah, it's like the – I think it was the um, uh, Cronenberg or Salons. Who is that one? Oh, yeah, Cronenberg. Yep, Cronenberg okay. with her and Jude Law. It's weird. Like they have sex by some hole in their back. It's very strange. Very strange film. Uh, anyway, that's my number 10. Um, she is uh, – whose daughter is she? Janet Lee's daughter? She's Janet Lee's daughter, I think. Wait. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. I think she's – yeah, yeah. I'm pretty know. sure. I should have wrote down that. Everyone else, I, I can, think, are pretty I much I can know. look it up for you. Yeah. One second. I I've got it in my upper list up here. You do. Vic Morrow is what I've oh, ever done. Oh, Vic Morrow's daughter. Right, right. There you go. 
See, they had made my side list. Look, yeah. I've got – there's a long list, an entire typed out page. Vic Morrow, who died, of course, uh, on that Twilight Zone movie with the helicopter, he was the guy who died in that incident that was such a massive deal. If you haven't read about that, read about that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Number nine is Cersei Ronan. Her, da- her dad is a famous English actor. He's uh, – she's uh, – for me, the choice – oh, I don't, it's not on your list? Uh, she's on my side. Okay. I was like, I need to see a couple more from you. But you could make this list. I think I had to put someone newer. I felt like I had to put someone newer. You know, as you were talking about looking at the scope of the list and what you wanted the list to say about yeah. yourself or about your taste, I had to put her on her because I just got a, I just saw Little Women the other day, and I think she's incredible in that. And on the heels of Grand Budapest Hotel and mm-hmm. Brooklyn, I mean, uh, yeah, Brooklyn, and all these other films that I've seen her be a lead in, I'm just like, this is she's so incredible she uh, as an actress. So to me, this elevates her quicker than maybe another young actress who would be coming up at this point because she's already. Already got so much notoriety and respect from acting, uh, the acting world, and also from fans and people who go see these movies. So yeah, that's why she's my number nine. I like, her. and she's great in Little Women. I, and I can't believe as a dude, as a straight dude uh, who you know digs sports and all this kind Don't of worry. shit. Your camo jacket is behind. Yeah, you. that's right. That's right. Your machismo <laughs> has been proven. I couldn't believe how much I enjoyed the movie. It's actually a really fun movie. Shocked. Do you ever go camo inside that black leather hoodie? You know what I mean? Just double it up. The black leather hoodie. You mean the the other one? The jacket that you got. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Just double up on I the... had the jacket on underneath because it was raining. Yeah, yeah. I was so... saying camo and then that. You know oh. What I mean? That is the underlayer. Like you're just going full. Yeah. And then after that, I don't know what you add to the layer below that. Uh, probably a shirt with like a knife through a skull or something like that. That seems to I be was the thinking, I was thinking like maybe open, uh, you're wearing the jumper from a prison. You know what I mean? <laughs> But it's open in the middle, and there's like then a T-shirt underneath that. You're like you're just throwing out all of is it. Is it the the sleeveless T-shirt, like the, the the what they used to call the wife beater shirt? Is that with the golden chain hanging or something like that? Could be. I don't know. I'm just saying. Uh, all right. So my number eight then is Angelina Jolie. Is that on your list? No. Wow. Be <sighs> wow. Because I definitely don't go back and watch all that much hmm. of hers. Okay. I respect the hell out of a lot of her work. Right. Okay. But I never rewatch it, and that's when okay. I was looking at her IMDb after writing it down. I was like. What what, Mr. and Mrs. Smith would be, I guess, the closest, and I never watch that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was looking more, for me, out of respect for the fact that she's made quite a career in Hollywood, and mm-hmm. she's really good in everything she's ever she in. She is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I enjoy Wanted. I always, I, I, I'll always catch that whenever I'm flipping channels. <laughs> I, mean, I really like this. Do you call like cheesy English action on a bullet? <laughs> English on – exactly. Whipping. It's a, okay. It's already spinning because it's rifled and it's coming out. So what is you adding a little bit more spin right now? How are you going to arc it? Well, that's why you have to on. train to be able to do that. You can't, not just anybody can do that. <laughs> that's what the film's about. It doesn't make a lick of sense. All you, the, the, the best case you're going to do is like send it wobbling so at least it's still kind of on the right axis. Yeah. But you could uh, – you'd be flipping – you know, then they're just going – they're spinning head over, you know, ass over a tea kettle. <laughs> so what, the back of it hits you? <laughs> yeah. Ow. <laughs> Does it? Doesn't make any sense. Ineffective. Ineffective. Uh, well, I put A Mighty Heart as my choice uh, for her. She's so okay. incredible in that film uh, playing the um, wife of uh, 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 Glass. Uh, Daniel Glass, I think his name is, the gentleman who was beheaded by the Taliban mm-hmm. uh, that was videotaped uh, and uh, is – I'm sure it's somewhere on the dark web. Um, I remember after it happened, maybe a few weeks after it happened, just like out of curiosity because you have those moments where you're curious to try to find – and I found the video. And when they start to slice his neck, I, I cut it. I stopped it. I lost my fucking mind because there's nothing that matches the reality of seeing the violence, the actual violence, right? What you see on screen or on TV, the stylized stuff or that violence that you see on shows or movies, it doesn't match the actual thing when it's happening. And yeah. you're just like, oh, my Christ. As soon as the knife was going, I was like, I can't fucking watch this. I just turned it off and horrific, horrific, horrific. But she's so good in this movie and it's a movie I do come back and watch every once in a while. Um, and, of course, you know, people love her Tomb Raider, the first one at least. A Girl Interrupted, uh, mm-hmm. she won the Oscar for that. So she has a legacy here. I don't know how much the legacy is being tarnished with some of her recent work because of the Maleficent stuff. I don't know. But her directing stuff is – is happening, I guess. So, I mean, we'll see. Uh, but I, I think she deserves to be on this for me, for me at least, personally. All right. Yeah. Which well, number? Go ahead. I mean, I have Matthew Broderick, which is no, like, it's, it's only Ferris Bueller. Yeah. Is it? 
I like others. What, The Freshman? <sighs> yeah, The Freshman. He's good in The Freshman. He's good in The Freshman. That's a good movie. That's when you, get, you, you got signs of maybe, maybe he can do this. Yeah. Here's another one that I like. Project X. That came before, though. I, oh, I like him from right. that, but that came before. You're right. Was that it was War his... Games? Was War Games before? Yeah. Yeah, okay. And War Games I actually didn't see until after Ferris Bueller. Okay. I don't think my parents let me watch that one. But Project X we owned. That was a sad movie. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. <laughs> anyway, let's move <laughs> on. We're watching this kid and like these just – these chimps in a lab and the terrible things that we're doing to him to, for military <laughs> reasons. Now oh. I'm curious. Matthew Broderick. Let's take a look here. As, this is thrilling uh, podcast watching is, for you is. all. Uh, his, his, the noted thing here is producers. So that's true. But war, oh, Cable Guy. Did you like him in Cable Guy? I need to watch that again. OK. Kind of thing. OK. Project X came the year after Ferris Bueller. So Project X, Project X okay. is after. Biloxi Blues. Oh, he's great Biloxi Blues. I love Biloxi Blues. I don't watch that again. Like I okay. watched it when it came out. What about Glory? Do you like him in Glory? Okay. There you go. Right? Do you sure. like him in Glory? We said The Freshman. And then – oh, he's the voice of Simba in The Lion King. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Cable Guy. Then, that, those, then this weird run of movies, Addicted to Love, Godzilla. Yeah. Election, the one with uh, Reese okay. Witherspoon, he's good in that. And so then, I never thought that was as good as everybody else thinks okay. it is. Okay. When they held it up, I remember when it came out and all the hype and the buzz, and I saw it and I was like, it was good. Yeah. You just didn't like the character. I, I didn't either. Yeah, I don't know. It just didn't resonate with me. You can count on me. Well, oh, right. He plays the boss with Laura Linney's boss, and they have that affair in the car and shit. I remember that. Mm. Yeah. There's not much, not much in the producers. Mm, yeah. yeah, he works. He works, and he's on he Broadway, does. of course. But I still believe he could somehow do it again. <laughs> do Ferris again? Yeah, right. he's Doug Flutie. You threw a couple Hail, Mar- Hail Marys, and I've seen it. Would you, you be excited if they announced a, a, a Ferris Bueller sequel? No. Like thirty years later? No. no. Okay, so you want him to do it, but not I don't believe as he can Bueller. do. It. I need he needs to build as a dad. Okay, do that in the public's eye because I don't think after all these years he's not Eddie Murphy. You know what true, I mean? true. In the public eye for the past thirty some odd years, he's yeah. been. Yeah. Matthew Broderick. Ferris Bueller is the anomaly. That doesn't seem – that seems atypical of everything else we've seen him do by and large. That's a fair point. Fair uh, point. All right. So that was your eight? Yep. What's your number seven? Seven? Uh, Patricia Arquette. Oh, nice choice. Not on my list. Nice choice though, man. Daughter of Louis Arquette. Yes. And I chose Ed Wood. Oh, uh, yeah. Good choice. Love the movie. Yeah. A, there's a lot of choices from her. But B, she is – so good on everything she does. Mm-hmm. And I didn't watch Medium, but... Uh, oh, yeah, Medium. Was it, what was the uh, the prison uh, drama with the escape? It was Paul Dano and yeah. Lisa Del Toro. Del Mora she, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Escape at uh, Dana Mora? Dana Mora, yeah. She got nominated for that, too, for Emmys. So, yeah. I think um, she won, too, I think. But to, to see the transformations, mm-hmm. to look at the entire scope of her career, I'm like, wow, you have really pulled off so many different types of characters. Yeah, yeah. A real breadth of work here and willing to do the job for the job. Mm-hmm. Like shows up as a consummate professional. Even if I don't like it, yeah. she's bringing stellar quality to it. It's like Gary Oldman before he, you know, the, the public at large yeah. really knew him. Well, also she comes from a family of actors or performers, mm-hmm. right? Because you have David Arquette, you have Rosanna, which is really the one who started it all in terms of that's uh, the, the siblings, mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, the late Alexis Arquette. You know uh, what he was doing. So he, she, uh, they were doing. I guess you could say that now as pronouns. Yeah, I don't know. But um, didn't but, know he passed or she yeah, passed. Yeah, but you look at this thing and you're like, she's the one that stands out. When you think of all of them in terms of quality, well, that's what I'm saying. She's the one that stands out of this huge yeah, family. Yeah. To me, it's her at the top. Yes, absolutely. And then. The rest of it's like the bald ones. I put Rosanna below her because Rosanna has a lot of good eighties work, and then and she's never not good. Yeah, and then David does more of the cheesier stuff, so I don't put him as but high. But Rosanna, for whatever reason, always seems to be a specific type to me. Yes, whenever she's that character, it's true. Uh, Desperately seeking Susan, she was lead in that. Yeah. Whereas uh, Patricia, I think, has been able to bend and mold herself into creating all these different mm-hmm. individuals. Uh, my favorite is True Romance. I love her to death. Yeah, in another excellent choice. Yeah, yeah, she's so good in that. And film. the cross-section of her and Oldman. Maybe she, they both, you know, oh. 
rubbed off on each other. Yeah, maybe. Just their work ethics and, oh, this is what you – it's like uh, when the guys coming back from the Olympics, like LeBron and Wade and all those guys, after oh, yeah. having been around Kobe for a little while. Yeah. And you're like, dude, that dude is an animal. I need to become an animal if I'm competing against that. Just I'm showing up at 3 in the morning right. to get up a 1,000 shots before 7 a.m. And we're, you guys are just showing up and I got a full sweat. Yeah. Like a crazy sweat. Just somebody who's so dogged in determination. Yeah. Uh, that's a rare individual. True. Very true. And uh, to see, you know, someone like her the, from the outside looking in, I'm assuming bringing that kind of determination to yeah. to consistently work and just crush it. And Ed Wood, I love that movie. Well, and she always finds these projects, too, to be yeah. successful in. She's got a good eye for things, especially over the last maybe five to ten years. She's really chosen some interesting prospect, interesting projects that highlight her talent and push her as an actress. Yeah. And so you love that, you know. And I liked Medium. I thought it was a damn good show, actually, for what it was. I never watched it. Yeah. So I don't know if it was good or bad. Yeah. But she knew what she was playing. Mm-hmm. And she knew, like, I, I'm going to raise my kids. I'm going to work this job. Yeah. It's 9 to 5 or 9 to 6, whatever it is. It's a TV show. And then, boom, I'm going to move on to other things. It's totally cool. But she is independent of... TV to me. So yes. when she was doing that, right. if she came out with another movie, I still believe that the movie is going to be great. She's right. a great actress. So it's like, I, I don't, that isn't the denigration that it used to be, whatever, 20 years it's ago. true. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, but especially, you know, network television now yeah. still has a little bit of that. Yeah. Agreed. Well, you look at Jennifer Love Hewitt, right? Jennifer Love Hewitt started out in films with Can't Hardly Wait. Or was she on Party of Five? I don't know. I can't remember one of those TV series. But she always comes Party back five to TV. She always right. comes back to TV. Yeah. 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 But it's, you're always good. Yeah. True. Uh, all right. What's number six? Uh, my number six is Rob Reiner. Oh, interesting. As an actor. Okay. Be- because of This is Spinal Tap, and then this is also my tip of the cap to you for all the work that you've done. Okay. Fair I love enough. This is Spinal Tap. Yeah. And... Uh, Thank you for that. That has mm-hmm. been a part of my life. You have a small part in it, but you've done so many other things. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give it to you. Why not? <laughs> this list is ridiculous. This list is ridiculous. There's so many people. There, there's You can make any case you wanted to throughout. Now, this mm-hmm. one is the lower on the breadth of the acting work as far as the side of. Yeah, but when he shows up in something, he's always good. He's always good. Like in Wolf of Wolf Wall, Wall Street. Street. He was hilarious in exactly. Wolf of Wall Street. And – on some level, it's he's an interesting guy, yeah. and he's worked steadily and, and throughout, just like his dad. Yeah, agreed. Uh, agreed. Dad's still working. Yeah, yeah, uh, I know. Carl's still Carl's still, still tweeting. Carl tweets. Carl's nine hundred years old, and he tweets. Some still my, going. Some of my favorite podcasts, like the Mark Maron podcast, when he was when he interviewed Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, I think they were back to back. Two of the best episodes I'd ever heard because those guys are still spry. They're still spry mentally. And I love that, you know, so especially Mel. Jesus, Mel is a great interview. Um, all right. Yeah. What else? What do you what else? Oh, yeah. I got, when Harry met Sally. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Princess Bride. North. North. <laughs> Who doesn't love North? Like I, I went with you on half a letter before I realized what you were saying because <laughs> I respect your opinion so much. I was like, yeah, no. Um, he hasn't quite captured it again since those times. Well, a few good men. Misery. Those uh, are two good ones. Those are nineties, though. Yes, in the two thousands, there hasn't been much. Look at all that work. Uh, and to start out as a you. TV actor, right? Meatball or meathead? Meathead. Meathead. Yeah, meathead. My bad. Meathead. And you know, to, to transition and segue into and just have this massive longevity career. How long was he on that show? How long oh, did that I show don't know. Run? That's a good question. Like six years, seven years. <laughs> yeah. So huh? he was fully a TV actor to the world at large. Oh right, yeah, and and following in the footsteps of his very very famous yes. father, uh, he was on for eight years, man, eight seasons. God there you go. Damn. It's a good paycheck, though. It is. He's acting. He's still been acting like New Girl, The Good Fight. He always shows up in these smaller little things. Uh, uh, <laughs> they did a When Harry Met Sally two short film, and he was in it. Really? Yeah. Um, directing wise, yeah. Shocking. LBJ did that LBJ film recently, the one with Woody Harrelson is LBJ. Okay. I never saw that. The Bucket List. The Bucket List was all right. Rumor has it was all right. Mm. Story of Us was okay. Yeah. I didn't see Alex and Emma. Which, which one's that one? Oh, that's the Hugh. Oh, Luke Wilson, Kate Hudson. All right. Uh, but yeah, yeah, there you go. All right. High water marks for me count, plus the varied career. And the overcoming the you were a television star called Meathead. You know? Yeah. You were set up to be like you're an idiot type of thing. That's what we've all been beating into our heads on some level. Yeah, I don't disagree with you. Uh, to flip the script on that and come out with this is Spinal Tap is your first thing. And I think that to me is an all-time classic for it this is. individual right here. A lot of people love it. 
Uh, it's just if you like, you know, music, especially from the, those eras. Yeah. And it's cobbled together all, all kinds of different stories that are close to real ones, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, we've experienced things similar like that working in theaters and whatnot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Over the years, you're just like, I'm taking a left and I end up and I'm like, where, the, where am I? I have no idea. I'm in some deep catacomb of this place. How the hell did I get here? Right. Just ridiculous. The Stonehenge is still the best part yeah. of the movie. Oh, uh, the Stonehenge, the cocoon not being able to open until the very end when Harry Shearer comes out. What about oh, – what about – for why, why would you wrap a cucumber in tinfoil <laughs> knowing you're going through a metal detector while you're wearing skin tights? <laughs> why would you do that? But it didn't seem like they were going for the I'm an idiot. Right, the, the just, obvious joke. Yeah. It seems so oblusive. Like, oh, I don't know. Of course you stuff. That's what you do. You're trying to project. That's right. So, you know, I'm an Uber man. Type of, but it's, he didn't. It was it's rock a, and roll. <laughs> uh, so good. Uh, right, black, it's blacker than black. <laughs> oh. I like Paul Shaver. Just kick me in the ass. Just kick me in the ass right now. Yeah, Fran, you... uh, Fran Drescher, Billy Crystal. Yeah, I think it was the great. first time that I knew him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I came around to that one later. I'd seen all of his really? stuff. Yeah, because oh. I wasn't like. I wasn't a, you know, one of those rock and roll guys growing up, so I came back to it later when I got into that stuff, and then people were like, oh, you got to see this. You got to see this. And I saw it. was really funny. It was funny. Well, Definitely. anytime – once you introduce you know, pyrotechnics and st- stagecraft type yeah. of things and you yeah. have big things you're deploying like Iron Maiden if they bring out Eddie or something. Right. Or, so that has to go wrong. Yeah, right. Like, At some point. How many did, – did Tommy Lee ever get accidentally stuck upside down while he was drumming? Like the hydraulics just oh, stopped yeah, working? Oh, yeah, yeah, Sure. Could have. Sure. Could have. Or maybe it was just like super slow or like jerky as he's doing it so they had to stop. They got him back to close to right and yeah. then brought him back down. I, uh, there has to be once you add in all those variables. Oh, yeah. There's footage all the time online of people who do these crazy stuff in concerts and it like breaks down. Like mm-hmm. Pink, when she has that like – she does that Spanish web thing across the whole – there have mm-hmm. been times when it's just stopped. I don't know what Spanish web – you're talking about the – Like when they do the, the – the, Moss? When they hang down those from those like kind of pseudo sheets and they flip around on the sheets and stuff by holding oh, on. Oh, Yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of Spanish web. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So she does that, those through the concerts. Sometimes that will stop in the middle of the auditorium in the middle of, and she'll just have to roll with it. Yeah. Or Katy Perry was on something that was floating down. I saw this recently and it's it starts to do this and then it stops. So she could have been thrown off into the audience from like 20 feet above well, the air. So, you know, you never know with this kind of stuff. So it totally happens. Yeah. Could be the last uh, tour that ever uses this element. <laughs> right. Exactly. Uh, all right. That's your number six. Correct. So my number seven is Robert Downey Jr. Uh, that's a punt. Ooh, nice. And number six is Carrie Fisher. Uh, that's my number five. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. Had to put her on here. How can you not? How can you not? Right? Yeah. Her and then her, she also has a compatriot from the same movies. Right. Fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I struggled with the two. Yeah. Uh, between the two. Yeah. I, th- I think she elevated above for me because of all the work that she did mm-hmm. throughout Hollywood. She was known, She was a script doctor. Yes, she was. And studios would send her, and she her fingerprints are on all kinds of different amazing movies. I yep. probably should look that up, uh, but easily do a Google search, and you can find lists of things that she is unaccredited for, but everybody knows hmm. that she was a part of. Let's take a look. Right? What are you uh, talking about? Let's it's take nonstop. Look. It's nonstop. Okay. Like, she did punch up for X and Y and Z and was the actual script doctor of this movie. It's like... Really impressive, the amount mm-hmm. of work that she had over that, that course. I wish you're bringing it up now. What do we got? Uh, Hook, Wedding Singer, Last Action Hero. Wow. Like all these different uh, type of things. Uh, she also definitely worked on the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. She uh, put her thoughts into that. Um, yeah. It was Spielberg that kind of got her into that. You got any other movies? Oh, fascinating. It does uh, – here we go. 13 Carrie Fisher TV and movie writing credits you might not know. All right. Uh, she did Postcards from the Edge. That's her life story. Yeah. Uh, she worked on Adventures of Indiana Jones, Young Indiana Jones, Hook, Sister Act. Okay. Last Action Hero, So I Married an Axe Murderer, Made in America, Phantom Menace, and Attack of the Clones. She had some thoughts on. Or uh, as a reminder, Coyote Ugly, uh, Scream 3, and the Coen Brothers' Intolerable Cruelty. Mm, interesting. What a varied list of movies. It's all over the place. Yeah. And we've heard of, if not seen, all of them. Oh, yeah. Here we go. River Wild. La- yeah. Wow. A river. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah. I don't disagree with you there. 
Uh, yeah, the out of towners and the Star Wars, all the stuff. So yeah, script doc- and Patton made his name. Patton Oswalt made his name doing script doctoring for years as well. So that's how you do it, man. It's good yeah, money. If you're that good, yeah, you can come in and see the flaws that are there. Yeah. Uh, and what else did she just get called in? Hey, we need eyes on this. Here's how mu- however much money your going rate is for that. Right, right. And yeah. she's the daughter of Debbie Reynolds. Yeah, for Christ's sakes, and, and Eddie, uh, Fisher. Eddie Fisher. Yep. But Debbie, so from our parents' generation, Debbie Reynolds and Eddie Fisher were huge, two of the biggest names. So then to be the daughter of that, yeah, how was she accepted? Like that's a hell of a mantle to take over. Yeah, yeah. Um, and now her daughter's following in her footsteps, following in her footsteps, Billy Lord, who's been in these last two Star Wars mm-hmm. movies. So yeah, it, it's there. It's a quite a legacy, dude. I agree. It is. Uh, all right. So what's your number five? That was my five. Oh, that what's was your five. five? George Clooney. See, his dad, or are you his saying dad. Rosemary? His dad. Rosemary's his aunt. I looked up his credits. He didn't get credits until after George had been working. No, no. Nick Clooney had been a host for a long, long time. TV he was on host. AMC. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not an actor. Well, no, he's been an actor, too. He's been he on was stuff. in two oh, uncredited things I see in what 1958. You're I see what you're and saying. And then didn't do any acting until okay. years after Clooney was famous, I believe. Well, we didn't say. We said actor. I know. That I excluded him for that. But I was okay. like, your dad wasn't an actor. You want to ding him for that? Rosemary Clooney right. did a bunch of acting, did she not? All right. She did. Yes, of course. She was exactly. an incredible performer and singer. I, yeah. I knew her as a singer. Right. I can, I, I'm sure I've seen a movie or two, but I couldn't tell you. Yeah, probably in the 40s or 50s or yeah. 60s. Yeah, it wasn't, she wasn't like a Huge. Big, Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But her dad to me was like, oh, yeah, you were a television personality, TV host. Right. Uh, whatever. That's, that's I'm what not, I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying any, I'm not denigrating. Okay. Uh, okay. It's a different career, and you're good at. You have a skill set that is really tough to do. I can move it off. If you want me to move it off? No, it's, it really your, it's your list. That much. It's your Man, list. No. I excluded Clooney for that reason. <laughs> All right. Well, if I exclude Clooney, which is a fair, co- and this happens on the top ten, it's your first time watching it. This happens sometimes. We will take umbrage with another person's selection here, and uh, maybe remove it. So, if I remove it, then Carrie Fisher goes up to five. Well, who do you want to put on in place? Who then you... I'd have to put uh, Jamie Lee Curtis down there at 10. So, And now I don't feel bad about leaving her off because she's on. That works for me. All done, right. Done and done. All right. What's your number four then? Four is the punt from you for Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Proceed. Um, I, I wrote in game down. Oh, that's fair. Totally fair. I almost wrote Zodiac. You could do the whole thing. Uh, yeah. I almost wrote Sherlock. Right. Sherlock is good. Uh, the second act of his career has been nothing short of amazing. Yeah. He's put out a ton of work. Kiss, and, kiss, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, kiss, kiss, bang, bang. Uh, that was when he was still kind of slowly this was coming back, back. To. Yeah, exactly, yeah. He was still getting the shots. He was still good. We all liked him yeah. when he worked earlier. He just, I don't know, he got hooked up in some... It's the drugs, man. Yeah. Uh, and that's one where it really re- appears where it was drugs. He was mm-hmm. spinning out of control. Yep. That does happen to people. So people are self-destructive, and they just continue to go back to it. Yeah, yeah. It takes all kinds of different people to make this world. It's true. Unfortunately. Very true. Uh, and I say unfortunately, just the self-destructives are pretty, pretty tough for all of us. That's why I said unfortunately. <laughs> um, yeah. And I just lost my train. Anyway, so Downey Jr., to come out now and have all these amazing characters that have resonated with people to a degree that it's really hard for any other actor to kind of stack up because now he's going to be part of if you thought star wars was huge like the next generation yeah. of kids that are going to grow up on this first arc of marvel i think is going to be massive yeah 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 they created their kind of game of thrones yeah. of movies mm-hmm. and you can go back and just watch through this series and he carries if, if it were not for him then none of this would have existed. And then you throw in like Sherlock, I think is really fantastic. I like both of them. Yeah, I do too. Uh, I wish they'd do another one on top of that and just they close are. it out. They are. Eddie, uh, guess who's writing it? Ethan. From oh, yeah? the Schmodown. Ethan Irwin, yeah. And uh, Dexter Fletcher's directing it. The guy who did, uh, took over for Bohemian Rhapsody and did Rocket Man. He's directing it. So, yeah, they're, they're making it. That's pre- uh, I hope it gets off the ground. Me too. I hope it happens. I hope it gets finished. And I, I want to see it because I think he's fantastic as Sherlock Holmes. It's a completely different kind of Sherlock Holmes, but it's fun. It is. And I buy into the why he can have these motivations and be able to still pull off the physical. Yeah. Because he is a superhero, but he's still a guy. But he's got to do all the things in the suits. You Mm -hmm. believe he's in good shape. He always looks like he's in good shape. Yeah. Nobody takes that much time manicuring their beard (laughs) if they haven't sculpted their body first. Fair point. (laughs) Unless there's the the, uh, the other side. You ever see the fat guy with like just the chin strap beard? (laughs) You know? It's like, what are you doing? Like Borkins? What are you doing? From Star Wars? (laughs) 
<laughs> the worse uh, than that to me, though. It's like yeah. perfectly just a straight line. <laughs> oh, just a straight line? Yeah. <laughs> well, there are variations of that, but I love the super pencil thin. Yeah. It's straight line. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> Uh, good choice, man. Good choice. Yeah, it's my number. I guess now it's my number six after we've eliminated Clooney. But, yeah, so we're uh, close. Yeah, yeah, and it's a he's so good, and I, I there's no way we have the MCU without him. There's no. no no fucking way. I don't care what anybody says. Oh, they would have figured it out. Nope. Without him in the first few years to get people to like understand that this is a uh, franchise that or, or IP, whatever you want to say, that walks the line between high stakes and comedy uh, to yeah. alleviate the high stakes. He is essentially the symbol for that whole franchise of the whole IP because a lot of those movies have that vibe to them. And it's the reason because he made it work. And so um, – And he carried the swagger to such a degree. Yeah. It's really impressive. I mean I like Downey uh, so much that I enjoy Air America because it's got him and Gibson in it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Literally the Fair. only reason to tune in. Fair. It's the only reason really to tune in. Yeah. But I thoroughly enjoy those two guys. That's what everyone – all I heard at that time, you know, which was nothing. It's not like I knew gossip columnists. Right, right, right. What, what seemed to be coming through is all the other actors that he worked with who are stellar all believe that this guy is talented. As yes. Be. Every single one of them. That They're was all the like, narrative. They, everyone, if you knew him, you would be amazed. Yeah. But he's just on drugs. Yeah. It's, it's That's whatever what it is. That's what It's going through a thing. When he was done, when the drugs and all the things started to consume him, people were – People felt it was a tragedy because of that reason, Matt, what you're talking about. I remember reading those articles. People were like, if he would just clean his act up because he's mm-hmm. so damn good. But, you know, you can't – someone's got to come to it on their own. They cannot, no matter how much you tell them, until they come to it on their own, it's not going to change. Yeah. And so he eventually had to. And maybe there was just a number of factors that came in at the same time that just kind of got him finally hit that rock bottom and start to work his way back. And, you know, he credits his wife very much, his producer wife, for helping him through that that situation. And look at the exchange. Sometimes you've got to invest in somebody because you never know where it's going to lead you, you know, and where it's going to go. And you may find that person in a positive place by the time it's all over. So, yeah. Agreed. Yeah, that was your number four, right? That's love, baby. That's love. That's, love. That's your number four, right? Uh, correct. Yeah. So my number four is uh, Jane Fonda. Okay. Yeah. I mean, come on. I know, but I, she's There's never – a shit ton of stuff. She is. And she is beloved by yeah. a generation that I am not a part of in that I never – I never understood why she was so famous. Wow, really? Okay. Well, until I got much, much older to realize who her father was. Yeah, right, Henry Fonda. And her brother. Yeah, Peter. But, yeah, Henry's work. Yeah. I mean, 12 Angry Men came up for us both as our number one on yes. single locations last week. Yes, or yes. Or two weeks ago or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, so you see his work and you're like, that, that is difficult. That's like, you know, Colin Hanks. Yeah. I want to see you succeed because you have – you're a good actor and you have all the chops your father has to me. Right. But I'm not comparing you to, to him. But it, he still has to overcome that massive mountain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's really hard to do. Yeah, I agree. Well, I think Jane did. I mean, she won an Oscar for Clute for Best Actor. She's been in a number. Coming Home is a fantastic film. The Electric Horseman, 9 to 5. Uh, she's an activist. You know, she just got arrested again recently for this p- climate change protest. Mm-hmm. Grace and Frankie is hilarious. She has worked consistently for many, many years. 100%. Oh, and also started the workout craze for women in the 80s, like hardcore with her with her. Uh, That's what uh, she videos. was to me as a kid. So. Yeah. That's fair. To That's see, totally oh, she was a serious actress, and you're like, "Yeah, really? Let's get physical." <laughs> she, that's entire entirely my brain. Just ridiculous. With the leg warmers. Of course. Yeah, but she's found a way to always constantly reinvent herself and she always exudes uh, like this kind of strength and steely spine and class and whatever your feelings are. Yes, of course, that stuff with Vietnam and what she said. Yeah, I mean, it, was a, it was a rough time. People said some terrible stuff at the time. So what can you say? But like you have to also yeah. give time for people to kind of walk back from that kind of stuff and she has. So um, I think she, we're, but for the purposes of our list, I think she absolutely qualifies uh, and has the resume and the pedigree to qualify to be this high – on the list for me. All right. What's your number three? My number three is uh, Kurt Russell. That's my number three. Yeah. This was a I – got, I got lots to choose from. Yeah. What do I want from this guy? I wrote down the thing. Now I wrote down the thing as well. And he is the son of Bing Russell. Uh, Who's in Magnificent Seven. Exactly. He yeah. was an actor before. Yes, he was. And Kurt started at a very young age, man, and he has been – yeah. He's been working so hard for so long. Disney. It started in Disney for uh, But the Disney factory. Yes. We're putting out as many of these as we can get out yeah. over and over and over again. 
And you were typecast as a Disney actor. And then to me, that doesn't even exist. I never watch any of those. Yeah. You exist utterly outside of that because you've been in so many stellar things. You made that transition. Yeah. 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 Even early on Mm -hmm. between that and Big Trouble. Right. Dude, I love you. And I loved Escape from New York at the time. Mm -hmm. To me, it doesn't hold up anymore of the – those early – It's a troublesome film. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, I mean the, the – when he fights the guy in the wrestling yeah. ring type of thing, it's the worst. It's bad choreo- it uh, choreography. Bad it's, it doesn't – The oh, dude lumbering uh, around. Yeah. The ropes. Yeah. Have they never fought – do they both have artificial hips? Like yeah. <laughs> what's going on here? <laughs> they seem arthritic slightly. <laughs> I think that's why Carpenter put the camera all the way back here so you wouldn't be upset by Probably. It, seeing it close. Probably. <laughs> But yeah, but the thing, dude, that's the one. I mean, that's the one. Yeah. Right? Because he doesn't even start out as the star of the film. Like everyone else has bigger roles at the start of this movie and then eventually by a project of a, a process of elimination, he becomes the lead of the film mm-hmm. to take us into the, all the way at the end with that moment with him and Keith Dave, which is fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. But, and then to go on, I'm a huge fan of like bad movie, Soldier. Yeah. <laughs> I want that. I wanted him to make another one. And yeah. Kind of get away from the – he's slowly trying to figure out who he is right? and explore something different because mm-hmm. okay. that half of Soldier didn't work for me. But all of a sudden, he basically, he was early James, uh, Jason Bourne. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Without the amnesia but right. been built, trained, designed for solely this task type yeah. of thing. Right. Then what is your humanity and like, OK. The Best of Times is another one that I enjoy from him. It's kind of these quiet, smaller ones. Uh, Sky High. Sky High is good. Sky High. He's good. Just out of nowhere. Boom. Here's another Disney movie. See, now we He's good go. in that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Hateful Eight again. Yes. Bone absolutely. Tomahawk. Oh. Um, Bone Tomahawk is one. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yep. Yep. His ego of the Living Planets. Uh huh. Even his work in the, I know you haven't seen any of these, but even his work in the Fate of the Furious or the Furious, Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. He's good in those. No. I haven't seen it. I know. I hope he's great. Miracle. Great as Herb Brooks. Sure, he's sure. Fantastic in that. Exactly. Look at this. You can do this, and then maybe he you goes can. through like a three, four year period where he puts out a bunch of like, nah, and then you go, boom, Tango and Cash. Like, right. Here we go. <laughs> it's a bad it. movie, but I like when it succeeds for me. It succeeds really well. Yeah. But it's got some cheese to it. Stargate, uh, Tombstone. Stargate, I love. Yeah. Tombstone, I love. Tequila Sunrise is good in that. Overboard, people love Overboard. It's it's all right. People love it. Uh, Silkwood, uh, the drama. Okay. He's sure. in that. Yeah. Uh, we said Escape from New York. Used cars, which is very funny. People don't talk about used mm-hmm. cars enough. And Death Proof, the Tarantino one. I Still was good seen. in that. What? Wow. All right. <laughs> Deepwater Horizon, one of our favorites. Deepwater Horizon. There you go. Yep, one of our another favorites. good one. Yeah. Exactly. This is all without IMDb. You can just keep doing this. Well, you without IMDb. I'm, I'm using it because I'm cheating. All right. Anyway, that's our number, both our number threes. Yep. All right. What's your number two? Two. This was a, a, a battle to the death, but I put Daniel Day-Lewis. Oh, is his dad? An Mom, actor? Jill Balkin. Oh, okay. I didn't know that either. Shit, I didn't know. All right. And I looked it up. And she it. started working long before he ever did. Take so it, he man. was a working actor. All right. That's when you text me and said, hey, are you going one way or the other? And mm. I was like, I went with both because he was my – Okay. I, maybe I didn't know your mom. Right, right. But you have been crushing. If there's resume, there's a resume. There is. Yeah. I only put another person higher because I will rewatch mm-hmm. – one of his way more than I will see of anything Daniel. Because Daniel Day is always – I think Lincoln would be the one I go back most for of his. Yeah. Because I think it's just the easiest to get into at any point. It's, yeah. There Will Be Blood, I think you need to see the build. For me, it's both. It's it's Last of the Mohicans and There Will Be Blood. Those are the top two for me. Last of the Mohicans, I can jump in kind of at any point. At any point. I love uh-huh. – dude – I don't know what it is about that movie, but I have an insane love for that film. Like, it moves me emotionally every single okay. time. Phantom Thread, I can't wait to see again. Oh, yeah, he's uh, so it's good been there. enough time. Yeah. Gangs, I won't go back and rewatch. No, no. Gangs past the first five minutes is not worth it. Uh, my left foot, I'm not sure if I'll go back and rewatch. What do I in the name of the father? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, hold on. I guess he's. Okay. <laughs> There's other ones he's done that were not as. True. Pay, like the one he did with Arthur Miller's – I think Arthur Miller's daughter or it's, granddaughter? It, I mean he's Daniel Day-Lewis. Yeah, right. So he's one of those guys that – one of the few people that knows in his time that he'll go down as one of the greats. Yeah. He's only done 30 things, dude. Exactly. 30 things. He doesn't have to at this point. We're all – Yeah. We're all on board with – yeah, dude, you do – what are you going to be, a cobbler in southern France? Go crazy. <laughs> go crazy. <laughs> Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. And hopefully in four or five years you get the itch and you come back and yeah. you're like, I want to make something. I've been thinking about a character. Yeah. Hey, Paul Thomas Anderson. Uh, <laughs> hey, PTA. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I got to be one of the few. He's probably texting him. 
Yeah, PT, uh, I want to do something. I can't imagine Daniel Day Lewis texting. Don't you think he doesn't? He's got an assistant or something that maybe keeps up on all that. But. I don't know because you, the, these these people sometimes have these weird fascinations with technology. These yeah. supposedly aloof people or people who don't want to be part of the mainstream types. Like these, you know, they have a weird connection with technology. But, He's divorced himself numerous times from technology in the, for the sake true. of building up true. to a character. True. So I don't – it doesn't appear as though – What if he's on like Insta chat? He's on Instagram chat. It's the only thing he uses. For some reason, he really loves it. He just really loves it. Teach their own. I can do some gifts. Is that one of the ones that has like filters and you can turn yourself into a dog or something? Yes, I think so. There you go. So maybe he's just uh, workshopping <laughs> characters. Daniel's just like so obsessed with filters. Like Daniel Daniel is just oh, he's like crushing. the dog, the rabbit with the ears. Maybe that's what it is. His side business. He's uh, you know invested <laughs> in some app development to try and augment for that. And he's just – it's like Kurt Schilling getting into video games after he retired because he loves playing <laughs> fucking World of Warcraft. And then bankrupted the, <laughs> that company plus defrauded the state oh, of Massachusetts. Oh, Schilling of, messed something up? No surprise. I don't know if he defrauded. I think it just they, it didn't it didn't turn out as expected. Mr. Red Food coloring on his sock. Uh, yeah, my left foot. You talk about that unbearable unbearable lightness of being is the first time I'd ever heard his name because that was like that '90s independent okay. thing. Um, he did Age of Innocence. He's got a small part in Gandhi. He does. Yeah, very. He's a, uh, like he's a, a thug, racist young guy and kid. The, yeah. The Crucible, which I never saw. Okay. The Boxer, which I really love. Sure. It's a good Irish film, in my opinion. Uh, the Battle of Jack and Rose, that's the one with the uh, Arthur, I think Arthur Miller's granddaughter or daughter. I have not seen that one. Uh, nine, that musical Nine, he was in that. Nine? Uh, Lincoln, you said. Mm-hmm. Phantom Thread. Um, yeah, there we go. And he says he's retired, so who knows if we'll see anything. Uh, you know, yeah. it feels like a sugar ray. You're coming back. Do you think you feel that way? Like far? It's not like far, where he's camping out. Yeah, no, I mean, like he I, wants you to beg him to come back. It could be one of those things of maybe when he retired, he was like, "I'll, I'll revisit the idea, mm-hmm. maybe eventually one day." But I'm done. Yeah, type of thing. Like that's that. Yeah, right. and if it ends up being I am in fact done, then I'm done, and I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're okay I, with it. It's. He seems the type of individual. It's like a fluid idea, but mm-hmm. he is kind of done. Yeah, doesn't want to do it anymore because right. of how maybe perhaps how much he pours into each one, which mm-hmm. is like, I do I want to spend four months committing myself to living like an eighteen twenties minor? Yeah, <laughs> okay. You don't have to do that, at, but I thoroughly appreciate it every time you do. At this age, yeah, at yeah, this age, right. I, how much time do I have left? <laughs> because he does it every time. Like he became a butcher for gangs in New York. Yeah, for gangs in New York. It, you know, it's great. It really pays off on screen. I would, just lo- I would love to have five minutes with him and just ask him how much of this is true and how much of this is bullshit. How much is legend that you won't correct because you love the legend. Uh, I love the legend. How much though. is true. Yeah. I don't want to demystify that one. All right. Fair enough. It is what it is. You, you stay being an artist and yeah. enjoying do your thing. whatever you want to do in life. All right, that was your number two? That's my two. My, my two is Michael Douglas, okay. which is a pun from earlier, which I don't understand as number nine, but whatever. Uh, well, I don't want to bash you. Michael Douglas does it. He's done a bunch since the 80s. And you talk about, like, Rob Reiner. He's produced a shit ton of stuff, too. Like One Flew Over the, the Cuckoo's f- Nest? Yes. That came long before, though. I, I really... No. Right. Yes. But like, that's saying. one of those things you find out, at least for me... Postscript on yeah, one I flew over. Too. I did too. So I, too. I don't uh, I associate that with him on some level, okay. even though with like Rob Reiner, I do because that's how I grew to know him. Right, know right. him rather. Michael Douglas has always been a bunch of stuff that I felt like. Like I love Wall Street mm-hmm. for him and him alone, mm-hmm. by and large. Wow. Okay. Hey, Charlie Sheen is fine. He's All good right. in it. I think it's one of his best films ever. I'm not saying much, but I think for Sheen it is uh, best performances. I'm sorry, yeah. best performances ever. But he's kind of like. I don't know. Anyway, okay. let's not get into his performance. Okay. Uh, to me, it's the Michael Douglas movie. Okay. And, like The Game. The Game is good. Uh, 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 Romancing the Stone is fantastic. Couldn't get – I tried to go back and rewatch. What? Couldn't wow. get into it. Okay. Disclosure is good. All right. Right? The it, the one with uh, – I always believe whatever he's going to make is going to be excellent. Like Fatal Attraction. How many times are you going to go back and watch that? I'm not going to go watch because it's a horror film, first of all. It uh, is. Uh, but he's, he's incredible he's, in it. He is? Yeah, yeah. But you made a movie that is great, and I know I'll never rewatch it. Well, what about the the Liberace one? He's incredible in that. that. Do you count that? He is great in that. Of course, that's one of my favorites of his. Yeah, it's essentially a feature it is. film. Him and Matt Damon, but he steals the shows. Liberace, he does. He is really great. It's nothing against Matt. No, nope. just Matt knew going into it. Look, that that dude is peacocking at all times. Yep. Look at the China Syndrome uh, chorus line. A lot of people like Black Rain. That's one of my fucking favorite '80s action films. Look, Ren. 
Uh, War of the Roses, people like. Basic Instinct. Come on. Yeah, but do you watch it again? No, not that. No. Because I'm a Sharon Stone person. I just – he's got a lot of those. Falling Down? That's good. It is good. The American President? That's good. People love that. It, I mean, I'm not saying it's not good. He made a good movie. I just don't go back to rewatch it. That's fair. It's what, what you're getting into. I feel bad, like I'm talking shit on Michael Douglas, but as I was going you're through the list. You're not talking shit. You're just saying what you're feeling. And the thing is, he can come out with something tomorrow, and I'm going to watch it tomorrow. Yeah. And then I hope it's something that makes the rotation, please. <laughs> please. Because I want to move you up this list. Traffic? I never rewatch it. Okay. Wonder Boys? Never rewatch it. Okay. Uh, you, me, and Dupree? <laughs> Never seen. I it. always forget that he's in that. Uh, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps, the sequel. Saw it in the theater. Never seen it again. Okay. Uh, Ant Man, Ant Man and the Wasp, uh, Avengers that... Endgame. No, no. That was right. Do you really count Endgame? I don't count Endgame, but I'll count Ant Man and the Wasp. Sure, he's in that. Sure, and I even like him in Haywire. Haywire is a fun little Soderbergh film with Carano, which I really like. Oh, the former fighter, former wrestler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. The fighter, yeah, MMA fighter. fighter. Which they use uh, – what's her face? They use Laura San Giacomo as the voiceover for her, mm. for Gina Carano. Um, anyway, uh, so where were we? That's my number two, Michael that, Douglas. All right, what's yeah. number one? My number one is uh, Jeff Bridges. Yeah, Jeff Bridges. What's your choice? Uh, Lebowski. Yeah, it has to be. I knew it was for you. Crazy Heart's my choice. So. Okay. Yeah, but it's, still, Bridges is number one. It's, it's, that's how you beat Day-Lewis. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you made a movie that to me is perfection. Yeah. I, I will rewatch it always. It's in the rarefied air. Yeah. And he's got a resume that, like, as he long succeeded as, multiple as long as genres. Yeah, multiple genres. Like, I rewatched Tron Uprising or Legacy, whatever Legacy. It was. Yeah, I watched it again the other day. I, 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 I don't know what to tell you. I love that film. I love him in it. Me too. I wanted to go back. I, the philosophical exploration that he's having yes. and all that stuff is super interesting. That's what and I like. The life-finding-away mm-hmm. aspect of the secondary people springing up and whatnot, yeah. and him battling Clue all these years was super interesting. It just fell a little flat Okay. overall. Well, I understand that, absolutely, because yeah. a lot of people felt that way, which is why it, there's not a sequel. Box office wasn't there. But I believe there's something there. Yes. It's like Men in Black International. There's, you have something between these two. This sucked. Yeah. This sucked. A, a, you know, it was not fun. It's a shame because those two have great chemistry in the Thor movies and in the Avengers movies. But somehow, some way, uh, was it F. Gary Gray couldn't get it out of them for whatever reason, the script or the story or the executives who know got involved. But apparently they cut a bunch of that movie from the movie. There was like a whole immigration storyline they cut out because they didn't want to be divisive. I, sometimes I yeah. think studios, when they, when they start to propose that kind of shit, I think they have to go to the public and say, we have decided to do this with this movie. Here is another cut of this movie. You tell us which one you liked because we will take ownership of the fact that we fucked this movie up. Because we're putting that director out there to take all the hits or the actors to take all the hits. And yeah. none of the executives are walking out going, yeah, I made that decision. I cut the immigration storyline. I think they should be, have, be able – they should have to walk out there on the plank and defend their decision. Hell yes. Yeah. That's my opinion. On Hell it. yes. Uh, all right. Get them. <laughs> all right. Let's read our uh, – let's go back over our separate lists before we combine our lists. Matt? We have to do that. No, 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 no. I was thinking oh, about something else we yes, forgot to do. Yes, yes, yeah, Sure. Why don't we do it now? You want to cut it in and we'll cut it out? No. I guess we can't. Uh, let's – we'll just move forward. OK. So at 10, uh, I have Jamie Lee Curtis, a son of – or pardon me, a daughter of Tony Curtis and Janet Lee for Halloween. Yeah. Do uh, you have that as well? No, no. We're going – My individual list, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Nine is Michael Douglas, Kirk Douglas. Uh, Wall Street. Eight is Matthew Broderick, James Broderick, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Seven is Patricia Arquette, Louis Arquette, Ed Wood. Six is Rob Reiner, Carl Reiner. This is Spinal Tap. Five is Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds, and Eddie Fisher, Star Wars. Four is Robert Downey Jr. for Senior, Endgame. Three is Kurt Russell uh, for Bing Russell, The Thing. Two is Daniel Day-Lewis, Jill Balkin, There Will Be Blood, I think is the one I'm choosing. And then Jeff Bridges, Lloyd Bridges, The Big Lebowski. All right. There you go. Uh, My number 10, Jamie Lee Curtis. Now after we remove George Clooney, maybe if Adam and Cody want to go and put a scratch at George Clooney at five. Uh, my number nine is Jennifer Jason Lee uh, for The Hateful Eight. Number eight is Shirsi Ronan off Little Women. Angelina Jolie, A Mighty Heart. Robert Downey Jr. Uh, is my number six for Iron Man. Number five is Carrie Fisher for all the Star Wars movies. Number four is Jane Fonda in Clute. Number three is Kurt Russell for The Thing. Number two, Michael Douglas for Wall Street. And number one, Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart. I'm curious to see what uh, graphics they come up with, how they put us in 
into these uh, on our list. So we'll see what Adam and Cody do. But all right, let's put this list together. Matt, you want to write it out and I'll bang or do you want yeah. to bang? Okay. I'll put Jeff Bridges Certainly for Lebowski, number one. Yep. yep. We yep. both yep. have it. Um, okay. Bu- 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 Kurt Russell was both our three. Yeah. Uh, you can move up to two if you want. Because right. Douglas is – what do you have at two? Uh, Day Lewis. Right, which is not on my list. Uh, and then do we want to choose a movie, or are we just saying the the actor? Oh yeah, yeah, just the actor. I think it's fine. Okay, yeah. All right, there we go. Three. Uh, and then Day Lewis. So then we're talking nine two for Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have Carrie Fisher at what five six. Right, but we haven't we haven't put in your two yet, right? Correct. Yeah. So where where are we at now? Three. Yeah, we're at number three overall. Okay. Uh, should we move up Carrie Fisher to three since she's at our fives? That, that would make sense. Right. Or where do we have Kurt Russell? Number he's, two. He's two now, right? Yeah. Jeff Bridges, Kurt Russell, Carrie Fisher. Okay. Um, then probably Michael – oh, shoot. Where do you have Downey Jr.? Four, six? Uh, yeah, six. Two, nine, four, six. I would say two, nine. Yeah, I'd say two, nine, two. All right. And we could even put your number. Do you want to put your number two there? Sure. Since it's above four and sure. six. Okay. This is the show, y'all. This is part of the show. This is. The list. This is the boring yeah. part of listening to two people type. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, All right. So, four to, so what, what are we jumping to now? Oh, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, I would say Downey Jr. at six. Okay. Do we have any other commonality? Oh, Jamie Lee Curtis at ten, right? Yeah. Do you want to bump that to... I think we should. It's commonality. We're okay. in the bottom, bottom half of the list. So that's seven? That is seven. Okay, here we go. This will be fun. What's your next highest, I guess? Uh, it would be Rob Reiner at six. Ooh, mine is Jane Fonda at four with Clute. Jane Fonda. And then, yeah, you yours with... Uh, what's your six again? Six is Rob Reiner. Yeah, that'll be Rob Reiner. And then what do we have left? Oh, what's your next highest? Seven, I think. Angelina Jolie. I got Patricia Arquette. At seven? At seven. Oh, shit. Yeah. Like it's... To me, it's a no-brainer. It's Patricia Arquette. Me too. It's a no-brainer, Angelina Jolie. All right. Let's do it. It's time for the coin. Flipping of the coin. For those of you who are first-time watchers of this show, we flip a coin when we're tied, and we feel like we can't come to a consensus, and the coin has one side of Batman, and the other side is the Superman symbol. Matt is the Batman symbol. I am the Superman symbol. Uh, and, uh, we're do you want to flip this time? No, no, that's fine. I, I trust you to flip it. All right. Do the randomizer on the coin head on the top. I don't know what that means. Will not look. Well, I think knowing what's on the top... What do we got, guy? Superman. Jolie. Sorry, Patricia. Sorry, Patricia. I didn't like Lost Highway anyway. Um, all right. Let's do this thing. The top ten actors with actor parents or the top ten actors with famous actor parents? Uh, I would say with actor parents. Okay. Sounds good. The top ten famous actors with actor parents. Yeah. At number ten. Angelina Jolie, Jean Voigt. At number nine. Rob Reiner, Carl Reiner. At number eight. Jane Fonda, Henry Fonda. At number seven. Jamie Lee Curtis, Tony Curtis, and Janet Lee. At number six. Downey Jr. for Downey Sr. At number five. Daniel Day Lewis, Jill ba- Balkan. At number four. Michael Douglas, Kirk Douglas. At number three. Carrie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds, Bobby Fisher. At number two. Kurt Russell and Bing Russell. And our number one actor with a fam- actor parent is Jeff Bridges, Lloyd Bridges. That's just like your opinion, man. Um, there you go. An excellent show. Yes, agreed. And a fun list. Once again, we thank uh, everybody that helps us with the show every week. Yeah. Uh, Chris Alexakos for busting his butt uh, for helping organize a bunch of different stuff, and Joe Abara, Mike Shea helping with the posting, and Kristen Smith and Hasso, mm-hmm. Matt, Mr. Matt Hasso helping us with uh, some social media stuff. We appreciate everything that you guys do for us. Yep. We hope you guys had a great uh, Thanksgiving. If you want to find us anywhere, it's Patreon.com forward slash the top ten. Uh, with the number 10, yeah. facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash the top 10 show with uh, all spelled out. Yeah. 
And you can follow me online at Matt Nost, M-A-T-T-K-N-O-S-T. Yeah, come come uh, patronize the Top Ten Show. It's still happening. Our Patreon is growing every day, grows more every week and Correct. every month. You guys support us so much, and we appreciate like, great. Like, one of our plans for next year is to be able to go to a town every month and do a live show. One of the ways we can do that is to building up, build up our Patreon and have the fans be committed to coming to see us. Correct. London is in play. Houston is in play. We'll have announcements soon. Our Toronto as well is... is yeah. We're kicking around that as well. So things are happening. As Matt told you, the address for the Patreon, go and take a look and see the tiers if you want to support the show. And we put a bunch of, junk, bunch of stuff out there for the Patreon fans to enjoy as well. Correct. And I think that's it this week, don't you? Yeah, follow me at The Roka Says, and we'll talk to you next time on The Top Ten. Ooh.